I'm going to explain how I use a Google form for evaluating my students quickly and giving them feedback immediately. Now, first of all, if you've never created a Google form, then you should go back and find another tutorial for how to create a Google form before coming to this one. And you should know how to do the basic questions and understand where your answers go before continuing here. All right. So first thing I do, and this does admittedly take a little bit of time, my first question on my evaluation is going to be the presenter's email. So what I do, what I would normally do, and you're looking at the view where, this is the view where I would fill it in. So what I would normally do, it would I would add every single email address for, for the students that I have. Class of 20, I add all 20 students. Class of 50, I add all 50 students. I have purposely removed them from this one uh, just for the purpose of this demonstration. This is an actual form I have used. Then what I do is basically I go through my rubric and I change the sections of the rubric into different questions. So for example, the, requir the requirements completed and here they are. And what's really nice about this is as I'm watching the presentation, as I notice that they're doing a live presentation, right? It's not something that's recorded. I can check that off and I can keep the timer on there. And so if it's four to five minutes, I can check that off. And I can do that as the presentation is going on. So then what I come down to is I'll do the requirements and let's say one requirement not met. And in the content, this, these would be my different descriptors on my rubric. So this would be the best one, and this would be sort of middle of the road, and this would be a little bit lacking. And what I do is I, when I realize they have completed this description, then I can go ahead and select it. And the same for here. And then I give them their final score at the end. And you can see I've this particular uh, rubric was under 26 and I've put in a, a check for that. So if I had a score of 25, that would not give me any problems. Then also when they're presenting, I can go in and type in feedback and just take notes along the way. And this is really a nice feature. When I'm all done with the students I'm presenting and I'm all done, I've submitted it, then I'll submit it and I'll show you what happens in just a second. First, I want to mention, notice some of these are required and some of them are not. It's really important that you think about what you're going to make as a required question on your evaluation when you're evaluating someone. For example, you must require that an email address be put in there so that you know whose presentation it is. And for these three areas on the rubric, I need to make sure I filled out all of those. So I, I made those as required. Feedback, I did not make required. I might not have any feedback for the person. And of course, I want to have a final score in there. So think about what you really need to be required. One other tip, if you're doing this type of form to evaluate students, I would recommend having all the questions on a single page because if it's one of those forms where you have to flip through pages to do the questions you might not be ready to go through when the student is completing some other tasks that are on another page you want to be able to see everything and be able to bounce around that's what really makes it sufficient what's really nice is you can go into a classroom and you can fill out this form on an iPad or even your phone and you don't have to be at a computer. It makes it really quick. So let's say I've filled everything out and I've submitted it. And then what I have done, and I'll give you a look at this. This is an actual uh, spreadsheet from a class whose presentations I reviewed. And I've blacked out the emails here. And these are the actual scores I've given them. But you'll notice that any of these that I click on it gives that descriptor that was here. So one of these descriptors. 
and it does that for the requirements completed, all the requirements, content, and preparation. Those were the names of my questions. If you look back here, you'll see requirements, content, preparation, final score. And so it will it will put it will put that complete. And the complete descriptor will show up. And then here is my feedback. And you can really write as much as you want. Now you'll notice here it says template one, send status, case number, edit URL. So what I have done for this for this particular form or this spreadsheet is that I have used an add-on called Formule. And that's a whole separate that's a whole separate instructional video on but what I what I want to tell you though about Formule is that you can with Formule you can automatically email the person whose email is listed here with all of this information right when I submit the form. And so that's what I really love about using forms for evaluating students is that I can give them their feedback immediately and they can receive their feedback immediately. So you don't have to use those kind of add-ons for a mail merge, but it really is a nice way to get that feedback to students immediately.